Well, my name is Isla and I run the counselling service here. It's a youth counselling service here in the YMCA for young people, um, disadvantaged young people aged 15 to 28. We had the idea of using a dog in the council room actually through with Jennifer Dowler who is the CEO of Dogs for Disabled. I'm a volunteer with them already because my daughter has an assistance dog from them so I'm really familiar with the charity and they were keen to place some of their dogs in a therapeutic setting. It was kind of early 2016, we hummed and had, I talked to the YMCA, talked to my supervisor, did a bit of work with some young people, asked them what did they think. The results were overwhelmingly positive. There was a lot of, oh, if there was a dog in the room, I'd definitely go in there. And then it was really kick-started because we had one young man who was struggling with anxiety and he responded so positively to the prospect of a dog in the room that that's when we really bought it and set it in place. So that's when I approached Jennifer and said, look, do you have a dog that we can use? And she had Hallie, the golden retriever. So it's Hallie that we've been using. I think she's been superb. Um, it's not, she's not vital. She only comes one day a week, so she's not here for every client. It won't work for everyone, because some people don't like dogs, some people are afraid of dogs. She normalizes it. It makes the whole counseling relationship more normal because there's a dog there. And I think the biggest benefit really has been for people to come in that door in the first place. It's a hard thing to put your hand up for counseling and say, I'll go in there and I'll sit with her and I'll face my fears or my issues or whatever it is. But the fact that the dog is here has made that transition through the door a lot easier. A lot of our young people will have been let down by adults and other professionals over the years. So I'm already kind of on the back foot when they're sitting across from me, another adult, another professional, trying to build a relationship of trust with them. And I just found that those defensive walls have come down a lot easier, a lot quicker because the dog is there, they can kind of suss me out too, you know? How do I relate to the dog? Am I kind to the dog? If I'm kind to the dog, then I'm probably going to be kind to them. And there's, it's kind of equalising. Like the dog does something funny and we both laugh and we look at the dog. And even if a young person's finding silence difficult, then they can look at the dog, they can pet the dog, they can play with the dog. And of course she can touch them, that's the other thing. I'm not allowed to touch them because of policy and protocol. But so if they're upset, I just have to sit across from them and comfort them like that. But Hallie can go right up to them. She can touch them. She can lick them if she wants to. So there's, um, she's not bound by the same protocol and policy that I am. So there's a real freedom in it. And there's a, a warmth and unconditional positive regard in spades. There's no judgment from the dog. I've been to counselling uh, quite a bit over the past few years and honestly it is a nice comfort like there's a thing where like it can be a bit distracted sometimes where you're just sort of like oh dog but uh, it, it's uh, it's still like really nice by the fact that like she's well trained she's uh, not drooly or dribbly you know your hands might smell like dog at the end of the session but you know nothing that a good wash can't really get rid of. Honest, honestly, I think it's just a nice, comforting thing, you know. Uh, I feel a lot of the time when you're in counselling, there is sort of like a downtime where you're not sure what to say. And even having something there that sort of occupies you is sort of nice. And it gives you sort of your little time to think in the middle, you know. I've always thought of uh, like pets and dogs, especially in general, as sort of reprieves a bit in conversations. And it's sort of a nice get away a bit. It's different having a dog in a room than actually talking to a person. Like, I am talking to her, there, but it's like, the dog in the room is kind of like, it makes it a more calm area to speak in. Because it's like, you just feel, you feel more at home. Like, you feel, oh, there's a dog here. It's more, it's a more calm space to talk like. Counseling has helped me. Um, it's kind of made me do the whole realisation of things that have happened in the past. Like, it's kind of go, whoa, that was pretty crap, like, you know, like, but it's kind of made me go, okay, this, I'm fine with that. I've put it to rest now. 
and Ayla in in her way has helped me in that. Like, but um, she is a great counselor, and Hallie is a great counselor in her own way too. She does she does help me, and Ayla does help me too. I find it really helpful because I didn't know what what ways to deal with stuff before and stuff, but um, Ayla helped me to deal, and she she got like she gave me strategies and ways of coping and what I found really like comfortable as well. Um, like it was different to all the counselling stuff because there was a dog and I felt like really comfortable with the dog because I felt like I could talk more because like you know when there's a dog in the room you know you can you can rub them and you know they won't judge you and stuff. So I found I found that really really um, comforting so I found it like easier to talk and then it was kind of more easier to open up and then like I'm actually getting on really good now and I can find ways to do stuff better. I can see the benefits of it in general. Um, I mean having uh, an animal that can show kind of compassion and kind of it's, it's quite soothing when you're dealing with the serious issues that you won't be in counselling. Uh, to have an animal or an affectionate kind of creature there that you know will take you through that process a bit easier, even if it's just a distraction really, while you're talking about the serious issues. I think it means that maybe the counsellor and, and the person who's been counselled could procure more out of the session because uh, the dog certainly would make the, the patient feel more comfortable about speaking with the, about the issues and you know, both the counsellor and, and maybe the dog as well, and the, the person being counselled will get uh, a higher level of benefits from each session due to the dog being there. My name is Jennifer Dowler and I'm the CEO and the founder of Dogs for the Disabled. So the dogs are trained to do a variety of tasks from opening doors, turning on and off light switches, sending for help, picking up dropped items, to helping children with uh, cerebral palsy type conditions to walk. Certain dogs like Hallie that maybe don't make the standards in other ways, we don't want to feel like we're wasting that resource that that's cost a lot of money to produce, um, the Irish public have paid for. So we want to make sure that we are using that funds to help people in a different way. So it might not have been like Hallie being an assistance dog, but Hallie could be a therapy dog helping lots of different people in just a different way. Isla with uh, the YMCA, she wants to help her, her clientele, which are often young people that have been through the system, which have often have issues with adults. Um, so really, if Hallie helps soften Isla's approach and helps get them open up quicker, then that's brilliant, really, that's a win-win, I think. Um, it means that Isla can get on with her real work and Hallie just goes in there and just does what she does best, looks pretty and uh, fun and uh, not a problem in the world. <laughs>